<laughs> Wayne Topley, you're the managing director of, well, not just the Cedar Court in Harrogate, but the, the Cedar Court group. What is, what is the Cedar Court group? Yeah, thank you. So the Cedar Court group is, very simply, four hotels, 500 bedrooms, 300 team members in what we always say Harrogate and the other suburban metropolises of West Yorkshire. So we've got Bradford, Huddersfield and Wakefield. So four hotels, all 25 years old in terms of age of the group. Uh, it was a family run business, had a tough time in 2016-17 and uh, is now owned by a private owner who supports us putting uh, Cedar Court back on the map. And when did that private owner then take over the Harrogate Cedar Court? About seven years ago now. Uh, it took about a year for the sales to get concluded and uh, he started business really in 2018. And what, what was his aim when, when, he, when he bought the business? Dead simple. Build hotels we're proud of. That's it. They have to make money. But actually building hotels that we're proud of is the number one objective. And how would you define then the Cedar Court? Because I think when you live in a town like Harrogate, you, you know, you obviously, you, you rarely would use a, a bedroom or more than maybe the restaurant or a function room. And I think most people are aware that, that hotels, often they sort of come and go, you know, sometimes when they've had a bit of a, um, an investment of money, they're quite nice and, and then they kind of go on a little bit of the decline. You know, looking around here, it all looks quite new. That's the toughest part, to be honest, Tim. Um, you can make a hotel look great, but it's how you maintain that. So most hotels will look to refresh public areas and bedrooms every five years. I think during Cedar Court's challenging years, we missed a couple of those recycling. <laughs> we missed a couple of those cycles. The objective has been to get Harrogate Cedar Court to be one of the best hotels in this town. That's tough, that's not easy to do. There's some great operators in Harrogate. But actually, COVID really helped us because we were able to define this hotel in Harrogate unlike we'd ever done before, i.e. we now know it's a full leisure hotel. And by a full leisure hotel, that means these chairs are leisure chairs. The pictures on the walls are leisure, leisure pictures. And we've been able to define the refurbishment around that market, which is people coming to Harrogate. Now, there's business leisure and there's tourism leisure. So it's about making a hotel that is a little bit of an oasis, uh, a little bit very tranquil, and a little bit of somewhere to relax and recuperate. We know that with the greatest respect, a lot of our customers are here for the bedroom, and it's pretty simple. Arrive at two o'clock, get your room, drop your bag, go to Betty's, do the circuit, and then come back for a drink and decide where you're having dinner. Actually, our job as a hotel, in terms of our design, is to make people understand, actually, it's quite nice here. I'd quite like to stay here for an evening meal. I'd quite like to stay here and have a drink before I go out. Um, I don't want to spend all day and all night pushing sharp elbows and harrogates, so actually I want a bit of a tranquil space to come back to. And we've done that here. We've, we've moved, without bragging, we have moved this hotel from 27 in TripAdvisor in 2019, and we're now sitting number seven, which is fantastic. And that's all down to team that work and run this hotel. And uh, part of that was dead simple. We stopped recruiting on ability, and we start recruiting on personality. We've got the systems and the processes. We can train anybody to do anything. It's a bit controversial, but we can't train people to do what their mum and dad should have done. Manners, <laughs> courtesy, eye contact, confidence, engagement. You can't train those. So if we can find great people, we can give them the skills to do the job. And, and do you not think that's, in a way, what people remember? Because if something doesn't go right, mm. if it's handled badly, you definitely remember it. But if it's handled well and sorted out, you don't mind in a way because you think if no one's perfect and it's right. never going to be 100%. So you do remember when places, restaurants, pubs or wherever, hotels, you do. actually put, put, things, you know, put things right. Well, you do. And there's an amazing stat in our industry that less than 8% of people give you feedback. 8% of people who stay in your hotel will give you documented feedback. And we try really hard. Um, asking, begging surveys, email <laughs> links, prizes, anything we can do to ask people how they enjoyed their stay, we do. But fundamentally, only 8% will tell you. The reality is, what's that balance? Because if you're doing running a great hotel, 7% will tell you it's great and 1% where you can improve. We've got problems is when it's 7% telling you it's <laughs> wrong and 1% saying, yeah, it was okay.
So it's that balance. But, but, but if I had a great meal last night, I'm not going to come to you this morning and say, Wayne, I want to tell you about this great burger and chips I had last night. But if somebody served you and looked after you and found out where you're from and shared a story about the time that they went there and asked you where you went today in Harrogate and told you what their favourite pub was and what their favourite shop is, then you tell me. That's the difference. You go, this hotel is great yeah. because of... And actually, we run a little incentive where anybody that gets mentioned on any form of feedback positively, yeah. they get a tenner. Because it's so easy in our industry to find people doing it wrong. The art form is finding them doing it right. So everybody gets a tenner who gets a positive mention. There has to be a balance there. They have to have had a good stay as well. They can't <laughs> yeah. say, they slapped me on the way in, my bed was <laughs> broken, but John was lovely. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They have to have supported a great stay. And they get 10 quid, it's dead easy. Some of my guys are coming out with 200 quid a month, 300 quid a month. They're earning more than me. But so <laughs> they should be, because they're working harder than me. And actually, they're probably adding a really well-defined benefit. Just, just taking a step back then, looking at, if you like, the hotel market in Harrogate. Yeah. Obviously, it's, it's a big conference it is. town, yeah. isn't it? And we've yeah. got, is it the wedding fair on at the moment? Wedding fair's on now. They're just packing down from the camping, uh, outdoor and camping show on the showground, which is fantastic. There's another event coming in town on Thursday. So, yeah, it's fantastic. So, is, it, is it fair to say your business is made up of, if you like, business types, if you like, through some of the events like the wedding fair? Yeah. Um, visitors to the town more, like the tourism, and then things like to your restaurants more and the bars more like and the events I suppose other events isn't it more like local people do you know what Harrogate is a bit like a seaside town without the water that's often how I pitch it when someone I'm talking to commercial people or banking partners or people from outside the business or outside the industry say Harrogate's like a seaside town without the ocean as in there's a couple of really clearly defined reasons why people stay in Harrogate um, there's peaks and troughs, there's ups and downs, and actually the challenge of the hoteliers is it's not so much the summer months, because as long as you've got a great hotel, you're looking after people, you're going to fill your hotel. The challenge is those off-peak periods that fundamentally mean we have to work harder to create reasons for people to come to Harrogate. They're there, and we're very lucky, especially in this hotel, because 600 yards that way we've got the showground, 600 yards that way we've got the exhibition centre. So. It's what's called compression. We call it in our world compression. Compression means when events are driving demand. And there are days when sometimes hotels get criticised, actually, that our rates go from £100 to £200. And that's because the compression is meaning we've got far too much demand to satisfy. Well, we haven't got enough bedrooms to satisfy. So naturally, rates do increase. But you try and come on a Sunday night in January, you know, <laughs> you're going to get a great rate. So it, it is swings and roundabouts, and it does help. So looking at the overall market then, I think there's been a perception that, that a lot of the hotel space is, is taken by, um, I suppose, people associated with coming to Harrogate for events. And perhaps that kind of volume of people has changed over the last few years as companies have maybe tightened up on budgets and mm. people have gone more to like day, day visiting events mm. rather than sort of stopping over. Is that what you've seen or is that just a, a perception. It still, still often so, seems really packed, doesn't it, in the town mm. centre? It's a really good question, you know, and, and I don't think we're going to be able to tell until the end of 2023. This is the first year, think about it, it's the first year for three years we've had Great Yorkshire Show on full occupancy, exhibitions that not only can happen, but have had the lead time to build momentum. You could do exhibitions last year, but everyone was still nervous. Uh, suppliers were not sure they're going to sell products. We're not sure of COVID rules and regulations. So this is the first year we've had a full Harrogate. It's fantastic. And it's definitely been better than the last three years, there's no question. But it, when we get to the end of this year, we'll find out. Because what happens is the events will go, did we have a good event? Did we make money? Were our, our customers, i.e. the sellers, were they happy? And then we'll find out. Um, I think Harrogate has got better at focusing on the leisure market in the last three years. And that's good for Harrogate because that is a long life and a sustainable product. And actually, it helps the shops, it helps the restaurants, it helps the bars, because that truly does bring footfall into Harrogate. I'm, I'm no expert on the leisure market, but my take of what you just said there was if someone comes to Harrogate 
you know, for a leisure weekend, for a fun weekend, they're more likely to spend in the shops. Maybe they're not likely to spend as much in the restaurants than, say, a, a, you know, a business stopover. Mm. But I've been away on business trips and I don't go, I don't go shopping for clothes <laughs> and things personally. And I can imagine that's the same for a lot of shops. Yeah. I think in the, in the past there's been shops sort of near to the, the, um, the conference centre that are more your kind of little shops that um, the sort of things that you'd buy something because a memento of Harrogate and I think they've done quite well. But um, I think Harrogate does seem to be evolving, doesn't it, as a town It is centre. evolving, but actually I don't agree with you because I think more people are working at home and staying at home, and that culture is here to stay. It will change, but it's here to stay. I would think for the next five, five years it's going to stay. And actually, going out of home is now an event for yeah. some people. Going to work that's not in your living room is an event. So actually, I think we will see spends yeah. of people going, I'm in Harrogate, I will get my smalls, I will <laughs> get my shopping, I will get the things I need, because I'm out, I've got time, it's under, it's under the banner of work, and it's a great place to shop. Yeah. So I think we do see that. I know that I see. My, my, I, always, I always chuckle that when you see, especially the older generation using Harrogate for leisure, they always come back with an M&S bag. Yeah. which I never quite understand. But the reality is that's the same ethos. They're here. Why not get what they want to get? Each time they pull their smalls on, it might remind them of Harrogate. I don't know. I don't know. But when you <laughs> see those bags coming in, you see a mixture of bags. But actually, there's always an M&S bag in it. And it's that comfort of knowing and they've got the time to shop. And I think it's the same for those business cost customers who actually are almost like business tourists now, aren't they? Yeah. It's yeah. the first time out of home and they're doing other things they need to do for their life while they're in Harrogate, which is great for the town. So looking at the, where we are now then, the, the, the Cedar Court, yep. I know there's a bit of controversy around which is the oldest hotel in Harrogate. Um, you're, you're saying 100% then that this is the oldest hotel? Absolutely. What are the Swan playing about? <laughs> and David Ridson, what's he on about? Literally, there's been a hotel on this site 50 years before the Swan was even thought about. Now. I think he might have fallen down and got rebuilt. That's where David's got the technicality. But fundamentally, there's been a hotel on this site since 1644. Um, and as you'll probably know, because you're, you're very old, uh, this was, before the Cedar Court, it was the head office of North Yorkshire NHS. Can you imagine if we had that back? The NHS yeah. had its own regional uh, functions, and this was the office, this was the administration function for that NS NHS department uh, and before that it was the Queen's Hotel and that Queen's Hotel was here for 300 years uh, exactly the same format and layout and um, I, I, I can't imagine what it was like as an office because they didn't do much to it it was very much like a hotel and um, yeah here we are 100 bedrooms uh, it's got great boundaries hotel got great banqueting facilities um, great views of the stray and it's a beautiful beautiful leisure hotel and where, where do you see the hotel going then you know obviously like any business, you, you know, you need to keep an eye on your market and where the trends and interests and demands going. Where, where do you see the Cedar Court going in Harrogate? I think that's really simple because, as I said before, the COVID gave us the COVID challenge gave us a clear stretch for this hotel. So every penny we're spending on this hotel is around enhancing the leisure offering. So you've seen the TP that we kept out there since 2020 and we purchased that in 21. That's been a great add on to the hotel. Uh, in the next 12 months, we're going to spend some significant investment with a Harrogate based design company on yeah. creating a very special restaurant, which is the kind of last part of the ground floor operation. We've got more work to do in some of our bedrooms. Um, we've, we've refurbished around 60% of the bedrooms over the last three years. We want to go back and finish that project um, and then we'll look at it. I think um, when we talk to our owner, he's got some big aspirations for the business. I, I also have aspirations, but I always believe in getting this hotel to its best standard that we can within mm. its own footprint and its own layout. And as I said before, the advances we've made in how we're looking at customers and that every time we make a change in the product, it gets such good feedback and it's great. We have a lot of loyal customers that actually return year on year yeah. and, and that they're, they're real fans and experts in our business and they'll tell us, I love this. I don't quite understand the crew of that chair who, who on earth put a parakeet on wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, the point is, it's got a plan, it's got an investment plan. 
that investment plan will continue for the next three years and then we'll take another view. And at the end of those three years, we should have had every bedroom refurbished, every square inch of public area space refurbished um, and whatever enhancements we can make to what we've got, then we'll sit back and go, what's next? And when, you, when you're talking about the, the staff, you're saying about the good feedback, surely that must make it so much better and more rewarding for the staff. You yeah. know, I think we've all worked in what you consider a bad job and you know you felt that you were there tackling the bad job and all the hassle around that if, if you've got how do you develop that kind of nicer work environment how do you manage the environment to get the most from people not just telling them to do a job because I'm paying you to do the job in other words what's the secret for the Cedar Court? It's ever so simple it's about being real and it's about actually appreciating these people are people um, not calling them staff. Staff is from Downton Abbey or if you work in a call centre, we're a team. Yeah. We have 13 teams that run Cedar Court. Either you're in an HR team or a maintenance team or you're part of Harrogate's team. Um, we ask our team twice a year how they feel about the business, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what they can improve on, how they want to develop, how they want to grow. Um, we've got over 50 benefits in the business now. Everything from taking your paid birthday off, um, because you should, why shouldn't you? We work seven days, we work long hours. You should go and celebrate the day you came onto Earth and you should do it without worrying about rotors and yeah. floor service and cleaning bedrooms and all that. That's the, the benefits are never ending. Development funds, it's about creating an environment where everyone understands they've got a real role to play and they've got a voice. And we've done that and it's great fun. People don't believe me, but every Monday night I sit with a large cup of coffee uh, in my office and I read every single piece of guest feedback that came in over the last seven days. Every single feedback from every single customer, from every single business. And it's the best thing I do. It takes me about an hour and a half and I go through and I write um, love letters to my team and I, and I write <laughs> angry faces and I, and I review every single comment and then I share that with every single team member in the business. So this is what our customers said about us over the last seven days. And that's across the group then, is it? Yeah, that's yeah. across all four hotels. And very often on a Tuesday morning, my mood will be di dictated entirely by the afternoon, <laughs> the e Monday evening activity. But that's important because then on Tuesday morning, wherever I am, or Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, I say, Alex, amazing feedback. You've got three people saying they love you. Thank you, I really appreciate it. John, let's have a conversation. Why yeah. were you so grumpy on Tuesday the 4th of August that when the guest asked you a question, you didn't give me a decent answer? You know, that's what it says. And it's not a witch hunt. And you don't get promoted based on two pieces of good feedback. But it does show that actually as the MD, I'm reading every piece of feedback. We're rewarding people for great yeah. feedback. And it's an ongoing conversation. And people look at me gone out. How do you know? Did you, oh, were they your friends? Did you know? Them? No, no, no. I sit every <laughs> Monday night for an hour and a half and read every single piece of feedback. I think that's the, that, why would I not? Why would I not? It's such a gift, people are taking time yeah, to write yeah. that detail down. Why would I not, why would I ignore that? It'd be crazy. So then just looking forward, we, we're sort of coming to the, well, it doesn't seem like it today. We're coming to the end of yeah. the sort of summer season. Yeah. Although it seemed to stop for a bit and then start just as the schools seem to go back. <laughs> um, yeah. So it makes it kind of, I suppose it's sort of a difficult one, isn't it? With, yeah. Did that kind of make a, a, an effect on your room numbers, for instance, no. over the weekend? No, no, no. And, and thank goodness we're back into some kind of stabilised booking patterns now. You know, we were, uh, forecasts and booking patterns were changing by the week back in 20 and 21. It was almost impossible to predict. It really was. It didn't make any sense. You know, even food ordering was like uh, playing the national lottery. Yeah, you know, yeah. but actually it became okay to say we just haven't got that product. Um, but this time now is going to be interesting, especially for hospitality. Um, we've seen a stabil stabilization of costs. Yeah, food inflation, food inflation is broken, as we know, it's going crazy. Yeah, utilities are coming back down, which is great because these businesses are utility hungry. Yeah, um, but Christmas is going to be interesting. Again, we're going to have our first real Christmas. Yeah. And we haven't had one really for three years, not real. Again, think about it, 20, well, Cedar Court did 15,000 covers. 15,000 people came to swing their pants in Christmas 2019. In 2020, this is just the party nights. This yeah. is not residence. This is people going to our banqueting suites and having a great time. In 20, we did 54. So that's quite, I don't know what the percentage decline for wow. that is. Yeah. In uh, 21, we did about 3,000. And I was happy with that because yeah. I thought we'd do. I thought we'd do nothing. 
in 22, last year, we did about 7,000, so around 50% of what we did in 19. This year, we're aiming to do not, not, we want to do about 10,000. Reason being is we defined the product, we've made it much more big band, much more food experience. Mm. We're not going for volume, we've got all the hotels selling really high end packages, and we're going for 10,000. But who knows? Because this will be the year that hospitality, especially hotels, decide yeah. if that age old tradition of the office Christmas party, which involved three quarters of the disco, either a fight or a snog. Yeah. I don't know, whichever, whatever your <laughs> preference. It has that died? Because it died in 21. It, it, it almost didn't get revived in 22. But this will be the year when they go, let's just go back to that great event that we just paid one price and we all turned up and we all had a great event and we all went home happy. As opposed to, and some of my restaurant colleagues won't be happy, I'm about to say this, schlopping around town, waiting to fight to get a decent bar, fighting at every elbow, deep elbows at the bars. But that's what people did in 2021. They still have parties but they went smaller numbers for yeah. COVID risk. This is the first year we're really gonna be able to say, Christmas is back, people, we've got 300 people in the suite. That's what we're hoping. Well, it was always an interesting night out because you'd, <laughs> you'd, you'd be out with people that yeah. some you liked and yeah. some you didn't, yeah. you know, didn't like. Yeah. And also many that they were on their one night out for the year this is it. and drinking, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it did, did create it's a, unique, a certain environment, isn't it? But don't you think that's a, that's a unique part of the historics of British commercial life? And I'd be <laughs> sad if we missed that. I'd be sad if that went. You know, that would be a shame, wouldn't it? I enjoy a Christmas night out. Oh. And I, I kind of like that formula. I think Ever, it, it kind of works. Yeah. yeah, they do. But let's hope, let's hope for a generation we've not lost it and we never get it back. That, that's the reality. I think it's that level of excitement when you see all the serving stuff come out like a train. Absolutely. <laughs> serving yeah. the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. All carrying exactly the same food. Thank, good, thank goodness silver service has gone because you, you, you lost the risk of going home with green beans down your DJ. I mean, that's that's <laughs> yeah. the thing there. But no, it's going to be an interesting Christmas. And uh, I know our plan and our strategy is to go big. Big bands, great food, great service and creating really memorable nights. So actually the next morning I want everyone to wake and go, that was great, that was great. And it was yeah. easier than going around 15 venues and it was mm. easier than choosing off a menu with 32 dishes on it. And you know, it was just a great night. That's what we're hoping to recreate. Yeah. Wayne, thank you very much for Welcome. Thank you. talking to me. We should talk again in January time. Yeah. After, I'll let you know after how the it Christmas went. then, that would Indeed, be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Or we'll be commiserating the death of the corporate Christmas party. Yeah, I certainly hope not. Actually, in fairness, the way the business is looking, it's, not, it's, it's looking positive. Good. We are up on pace from where we, we're not far off where we were in 2019, which is really, really encouraging. And the people we're speaking to are saying the same as what we thought they say. Yeah. Yeah, it's time to get a party. People are working blooming hard. Yeah. Let's get together and say thank you. And this is the first real year we can do it. So let's keep fingers crossed. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers.